Hello, beautiful people of Instagram and the world. Awesome Boone here, and I hope you are well. I thought I'd just do a little pondering conversation about life. It's a funny one, isn't it? It's something that I've spent the last couple of years really deeply trying to understand. I thought I'd mastered life a long time ago, like I really did. My ego had utterly convinced me that I was the master of my own reality. When ultimately in reality I was nowhere near any sort of level of master at all. So far from it in fact, I couldn't be further from self-mastery if I tried. The reason for that was is that I ultimately stuck my head in the sand. I avoided aspects of my life that created pain. I avoided aspects of my life that created anxiety, caused me depression. And I avoided all these things because I was scared. I was scared. I was a coward. I didn't want to go towards anything that made me feel uncomfortable. And because of that, I got stuck. I got stuck in this negative cycle of stories that I'd tell myself, well, the ego would create and tell me. And I found myself in a reality where if I was totally truthful, and I certainly wasn't totally truthful, I was actually very unhappy. No, I wasn't ever unhappy with the people in my life, but I live with this constant toxic soup of rubbish going around my head. I used to struggle so badly with just an epic range of negativity. The moment I used to wake up every single moment, this sort of craziness would just ensue in my head, self-doubt self-criticism, self-loathing, total lack of self-confidence, fear, fear on the basic levels of just feeling totally bloody lost. Now the crazy thing is, is that ultimately when I review my life, nothing really bad, nothing really bad has ever really happened. Compare it to like people I work with, when I hear stories of the things that they've had to go through, I kind of look at myself and go, my goodness, Boone, like, what the hell was wrong with you, dude? You, like, your life was fairly easy. But this is the important thing, is that we all experience life in different ways. We all code our reality in our own unique way. And our suffering, our pain, it's going to be subjective, it's going to be personal to us and our journeys. And comparing our journeys to others is pretty pretty silly, ultimately, because we're all on our own journey. And what I learned that by suppressing my feelings, by not having the courage to face up to all that was ultimately keeping me very, very trapped then I was restricting myself. I was preventing myself from ever really growing. Now some of you might be going like, what does that matter? What does that matter? What do you mean by growing? You know, this is life. You just get up, you go to work, you function, you repeat. I tried that. I tried that model of this reality and you know what, it didn't work for me. I woke up every single day struggled through my days, drinking, abusing so much alcohol, abusing prescription drugs, abusing recreational drugs. And I did this not because I was a bad person. I don't think I was a bad person. And my wife sort of assures me I wasn't a bad person. You know, irritable at times, unpresent a lot of the time. But I was never a bad person, I was never nasty. But I was scared to deal with what was going on up here. Like terrified, completely bloody terrified of what was going on up here. And it got to a point in my life where the pain got so significant that I couldn't run from it any longer. I couldn't keep just pouring alcohol down my neck. 
and I was drinking over 100 units of alcohol every single week. I'm sure a lot of you have heard me talk about this, which is a lot. It's far too much. And I was doing it because I was unhappy. And as I said, I wasn't unhappy with the life I was experiencing. My day-to-day -day life was fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Married to a beautiful woman. Good life, nice home, interesting job. But I hadn't dealt with the toxic thought processes and patterns and coding that I'd experienced as a child. And this ultimately was just keeping me completely trapped. And this ultimately is what led me down the plant medicine path. And I can assure you, I know the majority of you now will be like, oh yeah, yeah you know, Boone's experienced, he's brave, he's done all of this work. But I assure you, the idea of doing big doses of psychedelics terrified me, terrified me. The idea of doing ayahuasca, drinking this horrible stuff and going deep into your darkest shadows. Not gonna lie. Terrifying, absolutely terrifying, like on the most incredible level. I was just so full of fear. But there was this deep part of me which just sort of resonated with the fact that, dude, if you do not fix your shit, then this is going to hold you back for the rest of your life. And this is the crazy thing, is that we self-sabotage. We will blame and we'll justify the external situations and people for our wrongdoings and the situations we find ourselves in. But it's never the situations externally. We're responding to external stimulation because of the way we've been coded and the things that we've gone through and the traumas of our past. And then we project onto a situation in the current present moment of reality something which potentially happened 30 years ago. It no longer exists. And this is the ultimately the biggest thing to understand that anything from your past, regardless of how painful you believe it to be, no longer exists. Like it doesn't exist. It's gone. Poof. Like a puff of smoke, it's gone. You can't, you can't grab it back. You can't change it. But what you can do, you can change the way you respond to it. And this takes effort. This takes patience. This takes becoming aware of what holds you back. And the problem is, this is the tricky bit, is that 95% of our entire reality and everything that happens in it is taken care of by our subconscious mind. We're only conscious of 5% of everything that we experience. And then we're making conscious decisions based on just 5% of data. And we wonder why very often we really mess up. Of course we do. We're only consciously aware of such a small amount of data and the information needed to make a constructive, positive choice moving forward. How can we make good decisions based off just 5%? It's crazy. It's almost like this. it's set up to sort of keep us stuck. And this is, for me, where plant medicines has just come into their own. Like, I was so stuck. I was stuck in a belief system which was 38 years old when I started this journey. And it was so desperately stuck and it was so desperately limiting and my ego had created such an incredible amount of stories which just supported this false narrative. Kept supporting my, my, my desire and need to keep drinking. I mean, the ego, oh, people, when you start to recognize how your ego keeps you stuck, you'll be mortified. Like really, you'll be absolutely bloody mortified. The majority of the thoughts that go on up here is ego, it's human mind. It's part of the basic programming of this chimp suit, this, this flesh suit that we find ourselves in. And I would argue that part of the ascension process, part of the process of becoming more enlightened is to start to recognize that the thoughts up here, the majority of the time, are nothing to do with you. It's this basic programming kicking off your ego. And we can 
allow our ego to have control over us. And that's fine if you choose to allow your ego to have control over you. That's that's not a problem at all. But just recognize that ego will keep you stuck unless you take some sort of element of control and have some sort of influence over it. It will create stories. Like the ego is it's it's a it's a little bugger really. I mean, a classic example is and you know, most of us will be able to relate to this. You wake up in the morning, it's cold outside. And, and, and straight away the mind starts chattering. Oh, oh, you know what, Boone? You know, you're a bit tired today. Oh, it's cold. Or oh, I can hear it's raining outside. Let's sack off work. Or oh, you could easily phone in sick and maybe you could just spend the day on the sofa watching Netflix and eating your favorite food and just sort of surfing the internet. That's all ego. It's all ego creating these little stories. And the problem is, is that majority of the time we listen to them. So for me, like with booze, I'd wake up in the morning, the noise would be going off in my head, just this absolute atomic bomb of just shit, just off in my head. I mean, it was so exhausting, I can't tell you. And the ego straight away would be like, oh, this is hard. This isn't fun. There's a beer in the fridge. Honestly, go on, Boone. There's a beer in the fridge. The other part of me, my soul, my higher self would be like, oh, dude, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, you know. You really shouldn't be cracking open a tinny. Ego would be like on the other shoulder going, oh, don't be a pussy. If you have a beer, you'll feel better. If you have a beer, you'll feel better. Then you have one beer and then you go to, you find, before you know it, you find yourself 10 o'clock in the morning, opening the bloody fridge, pulling out a can of beer, popping it open, drinking it in one. And then your ego going, see? You feel better now, don't you, Boone? You feel better now. See, I told you I was, you were, I was right. You can trust me. I'm here to look after you. I'm the only one trying to look after you. Everyone else is trying to attack you, judge you, throw throw attacks and, you know, judgments and, you know, all of this sort of rubbish, negativity. Man, the ego. Son of a bitch. Absolute little son of a bitch. But you can, I've learned, create a much more healthier relationship with your ego. Yes, yes, yes. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes practice. Most of all, it takes bloody discipline and the majority of, let's, let's face it, we avoid discipline. I avoided discipline. Discipline for me just reminded me of school. And I hated school. Like I really hated school. I went to a school and where my teachers were just awful. Most of them ex-army, most of them screwed up, insecure people who just used to bully us. Just absolutely bully us. And that experience for me, seven years at my, my secondary school, being judged and bullied by these damaged, insecure ex-army servicemen, he just looked at us as just, I don't know, instruments to abuse. So bloody damaging, the stuff we go through as kids and you just don't realize it. Like during the ayahuasca, I remember, I remember having a really powerful experience and bearing in mind, I had no memory of this. I was seven years old and we'd been out, been out in the sports fields, it's cold, it's a winter's day. I think we're doing rugby or something like that. Rugby, football, whatever. It's not important. And um, I, I, I was very insecure as a child. Very, like, really, really insecure. Total lack of conf lack of confidence, and just des just desperately insecure. And I had been desperately insecure for a really, really long time. And it's only it's only really in the last couple of years that I've been able to sort of sort all this stuff out. And this is all down to thanks to plant medicines. But this one time, right? Um, we're coming from the sports fields and um, you know the teacher would always sort of force us into the showers and the, the showers were never warm though it was cold showers you know you can just imagine just a, a cold block with just these horrible cold showers and I just didn't want to do it so I, I avoided it and sort of tried to sleek away and get dressed and anyway this teacher caught me and um, he went through the roof that I wasn't having a shower. And I was just like, it's home time, so I'm, I'm, you know, my mum's here, I'm gonna go home, I'll have a nice hot bath at home, don't you worry about it. And he took huge offense to this, I'm seven years old. This guy, big ex-military guy, tattoos, built like a brick shit house. 
he grabbed me. He grabbed me by my arm, and I remember it. And he pulled me down this stone cold corridor into another change room where he single handedly took all my clothes off, everything, stripped me down to my, my, my birth suit, and didn't chuck me in the shower with my age group. He chucked me in the shower group with the boys who were 16. And I remember this little skinny seven year old boy absolutely petrified, just being literally thrown into this room and skidding across the floor, which was soapy and wet, and just being greeted by like 25 big boys who all just mocked me and laughed at me. And the teacher joined in. And that moment for me doesn't necessarily sound like much. But that was an absolute catalyst which just created this huge amount of anxiety, fear and lack of confidence and and shame and embarrassment. And that single point in my life went on to heavily influence so many different aspects of my life. And the scary thing is, is because the subconscious takes care of most of this shit, I wasn't even consciously aware of it. I had no conscious thoughts of it. I didn't think about it. Yet this damaging program from my past kept creating issues in my future and in the here and now and when we don't heal and this is why healing is so important and I know I bang on about it a lot and I'm not banging on about it because I'm trying to be righteous and judgmental I'm doing it because my life has improved so much that I want other people's lives to improve I used to wake up every single day and as soon as I open my eyes my head would just be this fireworks display of negativity just I mean millions of thoughts it felt like just constant flow 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 it was exhausting and no the healing journey has not been easy drinking ayahuasca 13 times over the last two years has been really challenging it's brought up a huge amount I've had to I've had to find a decent mentor to sort of really sort of take me through it and thank goodness for her she's been able to you know she saved my life and has been able to take me through the, the one of the most incredible, most powerful healing programs on earth, which has now allowed me to sit on camera like this and talk about my vulnerabilities, the lack of confidence and the cowardice and the fear that I had inside of me, which is important. It's so important to talk about because despite the fact that we all wear these public masks and we all pretend that life is fine you know we all struggle we all have these deep human emotions we all suffer from darkness we all sure as anything suffer from anxiety and depression and fear and that's okay this human experience is challenging it is it really is really really hard and it's really important to remember that When we don't heal, our our, our lives, our choices in the present moment and moving into the future are dictated to by shit that happened to us in the past, which no longer exists and it just keeps us viciously trapped. And thank God for plant medicines, my goodness, you know, the ayahuasca just being able to show you the deeper, darker aspects of you and why you are and how you can fix and heal yourself. And then when you fix and you heal yourself, you become free. And this is the crazy thing. And I don't understand why everybody's not talking about healing themselves. Because in life, I mean, you can go on a course to become more attractive and sexier to women and learn how to pull them and all of this sort of jazz. You can go on courses to become a better entrepreneur. You can go on to courses to become a better speaker and all this sort of jazz. But the crazy thing is, is that if you just start your healing process and heal all that's holding you back guess what you're going to have better relationships and more sex you're going to be more successful at business just because your mind is free from all the subconscious chaos that you've been carrying around for the probably your entire life which just keeps us so bloody stuck it's madness total self-sabotage and this is why it's so important we've got to learn to let stuff go We've got to let stuff go. There's no point holding on to anything in the past. Learn the bloody lessons from it. Sure, that's really important. Always learn the lessons. But don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to the pain. Because all you're doing, you're just holding on to pain and you're just carrying that pain forward. You don't need to because it doesn't exist. You're holding on to it through memory and imagination alone. 
doesn't exist. Let it go. And this is what we need to do as a society. This is why we see society and this world so lost, so full of fear and negativity. I mean, just look at the world. This, we live on this incredible planet with everything that we need. And yet in the 21st century, it's riddled with poverty, sickness, illness, corruption. So much corruption, manipulation by governments, by our media, by big pharmaceuticals. Yeah, crazy. The deep, dark, ruling elite who just seek to suppress us and to keep us in this state of quo stuckness. Ah, oh, it's frustrating. But we can change it. We can change it by starting to change ourselves. We've all heard the expression, if you want to, if you want to see a change, then be that change. It's so true. When we start working on ourselves, when we start facing all that we fear, when we start facing all that holds us back, I promise you, you will experience freedom like you simply possibly can't even imagine at this moment in time. So this is a choice. You can choose to remain as you are. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If you make the conscious choice to stay stuck, to stay being controlled by stuff in your past, then that's cool. That's your choice. There's no such thing as right or wrong, good or bad. That's your choice. But if you're going through your life and you're finally sort of thinking to yourself, geez, man, you know what? I just feel that there should be a lot more to this existence. And why am I not experiencing it? Then look to start healing yourself. Start doing your personal work. Start looking into your shadows. Yes, yes, yes. It will feel uncomfortable. Your ego will create stories and a narrative to try and avoid you doing this because it wants to keep you stuck in your comfort zone where it's in control. It can create a fear and it will stop you from doing anything. Fear, ultimately, from what I've learned, and this is only my personal experience, is an illusion. It's an absolute illusion. The stuff I've been absolutely terrified of, right, which I've now gone and done, was it anywhere as bad as I imagined? No way. Yes, it was a little bit uncomfortable, but you push through. And once you push through the fear, you realise it is just an illusion and it just dissipates like smoke. It collapses, goes. And I promise you, on the other side of fear is just absolute joy, wonder, amusement, passion, love, excitement, vibrance, appreciation, gratitude. All of it. It is beautiful. So, I hope this message has inspired you to start your healing journey, to go deeper, to expect more from your existence. Do not put up with the day-to-day -day mundane drudgery of this existence which you've been sold working nine till five struggling feeling negative feeling depressed feeling anxious we can choose our emotional states we code our reality if we want to code it as a negative experience we can code it as a negative experience but you know this you can make a choice to code it as a positive experience there is no such thing as good, bad, right or wrong. That is dualism. That's a human constructed idea that something must be good or bad. It's our need to label. Stop labeling. Just be. Be in the present moment and just observe what life is showing you. Because I promise you in that observation, there are thousands of hidden little lessons. And when you start to take those lessons and apply them to your life, I promise you, your life will change beyond anything that you can imagine. So, that's the end of this rant from Boone. Big love to you all. If any of you are really interested in starting a deep healing experience, come and talk to me. We do a deep 10-day healing experience in the heart of Europe. I also do private one-to-one -one coaching for people who are very interested and committed it's an important bit, committed to really dealing with everything that holds them back. It's not going to work if you're not committed. It's not going to work if you're not prepared to show a bit of courage. It's not going to work if you're, if, if, if you're going to sort of run away 
from the first sign of darkness or you know uncomfortable emotions for us to heal you have to face everything that you've ultimately been avoiding your entire life that is how we heal and i promise you once you push through the fear once you push through the darkness the other side is just amazing it's a bit like when you're walking around london and it's a miserable gray day and it's raining just above that cloud and that rain and that grayness it's always sunny this is the same of our reality once we push through that fear the sunshine is on the other side big love to you all have an absolutely amazing day and if you want to chat please do feel free to dm me or email me at orson at orsonboon.com super easy love you all